Hi everybody, so thanks for tuning in for my newest video. So this video is going to be a little different than the other ones. It's basically going to walk you through a shortened presentation of my equine nutrition class that I would do in person, but it's just been tweaked for an online version for you all to still watch and get some really good information. So um, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the presentation here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, so thank you all for coming. This is um, Horse Nutrition 101. You'll also hear me talk about Equine Nutrition 101 or Basic Horse Nutrition, something along those lines. So um, before we delve into this, this video, I do uh, want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. Any of the brand name products you see in this video are not any kind of brand or product endorsement of any kind by either the Pueblo County Extension Office or the Colorado State Extension Office. These are just primarily examples that are just shown for educational purposes only. So diving into our very first discussion, we're going to be talking about feed labels and how to correctly read them. So many of you probably go to places like Big R or Tractor Supply to go get your grain, but have you ever noticed this little white uh, tag on the bottom of your feed bag that's right here on this left side picture? This tag, even though it is small print, actually has some very important uh, information on it that will help you narrow down what you need to feed your horse. Since there are so many choices and so many brands to pick from, it can quickly get confusing and overwhelming if you don't know what to look for. I mean, just look at the difference between Safe Choice and our Triple Crown here. They already have a bunch of different types, so it can get really, really confusing. And if you look at just the bags, it can get really difficult to make sure you're getting your horse the right amount of nutrition that they need. So, the main things you want to look for on a feed label are what is listed here. It's uh, crude protein, lysine, crude fat, crude fiber, and vitamins A, D, and E. So what do all these confusing items actually mean in simple terms? Well, crude protein relates directly to energy. The percent that's listed on the label tells you how much energy that feed will give your animal. The same with crude fat. Crude fiber is a funny one because it's a source of energy, but it also shows how much of the energy can be digested. That's what that word crude means. It's how much can you actually absorb when it's getting digested by the animal. Now, before you think that all you need is some fat, fiber, and protein to have a happy, healthy horse, we have to rein that idea back in and add on to it. We also have amino acids that are important to our horse's health and vitamins. Some of the amino acids are very critical to the health of our horses, such as lysine, which is here, which plays a role in building muscles. The last bit that is important to note on a feed label is the vitamin A, D, and E amounts, which is this last bottom part here. Vitamin A helps with their vision and immune system, D helps with bone growth, and E helps with muscle strength. Every feed level will have different percentages of all these items, so it's important that you understand what these mean and how much you need of each to properly feed your horse. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is these two pyramids here. So this big one on the bottom is our equine food pyramid, and then our one on the right, the higher up one, is a human food pyramid. So if you notice on our human food pyramid, there's, it's divided basically into three sections. We have our eat only or like very little of, which is usually our sweets, like our pop and our candy and our sugar, things like that. Because if you eat too much of that, you're going to develop health issues like teeth uh, falling out because of cavities and other things like that. Then we have our next section, which is eat moderately, which is here in the middle where we have like milk and fish and eggs and yogurt and cheese and things like that, because those are things you want to eat of about a good amount of time, not your whole diet, but you definitely want it to consist a good amount of it. And then our very bottom is the eat most, where we have like our breads and our grains, our vegetables and fruits and things like that. Things are that really healthy for you that will help keep your body in the utmost shape it can be. Same thing with horses. So when you look at a food a feed label and you're looking at these crude proteins, crude fat, fiber, all this stuff, you need to figure out what in the world does that fall onto our pyramid when you're thinking about feeding your horse grain. So just like on a human pyramid, we have our top eat only a little section, right? Our vitamins and minerals and our concentrates. So vitamins and minerals, remember that's like lysine or vitamin A, D, E. So you wanna make sure those aren't like in a huge amount because that's in the eat only section. 
eat only a little section, sorry. Same with our concentrates. Concentrates are anything that you would add onto their food, like um, if you add like butte in a liquid form or joint flex or anything like that. Again, you don't wanna add a whole bunch. You only wanna add a little bit because it's not something they need to have a bunch of because it can cause health issues if you use too much. Then in our eat moderately section, we have here our water and salt. Of course, we know that horses need access all the time to clean, um, cool water that will help them stay hydrated. So that's really important that they have access to these at all times. And then our eat most section is our forage, which is also known as our haze. And we'll get into that a little bit more. But I did wanna show you how, when you're thinking of how to feed your horse hay and grain and how to read a feed label and what type of feed grain you need to get from a store, think of this equine food pyramid because it really will help you understand things in a simpler sense and help you with the feed management plan than trying to remember all these uh, definitions of these big terms. So then we move into talking about grain types. So say you figured out how to read a feed label, you remember our food, food pyramid, all that great stuff. Well, now we have to think about what type of grain is best for your horse. So there are uh, first off, there's things such as what are called cereal grains. So an example of a cereal grain would be items such as corn, oats, and barley. And this one, this Country Feeds one, is a great example of a cereal grain because it has all of those all together. So that would be a cereal grain. Grains are lower in fiber and higher in energy than hay, which is why you don't have to feed as much grain as you do hay. And remember our pyramid of foods that I just talked to you about? The grain is that very top section that is the least amount that you want to feed. So when you think about what type of grain you want to think about and feed, you're going to have our three main types, our formulated, concentrated, and complete. And we have our long definitions of those there. And to make it simpler, instead of just reading those definitions to you, I'm going to walk you through some real life examples of these three different types so you kind of have a better picture of what it means when you see these terms. So here are our three examples. So our first bag, and I'm starting here on the left side, there's my mouse, um, this like yellowish looking bag here with our sorrel horse running on it. This is tr the, a bag of Triumph Professional Pellet Feed. It has 14% crude protein, 12% crude fiber, and 8% crude fat. Now this is an example of a formulated feed because it has a combination of cereal grains, grain byproducts, and other items. This type of grain would be great for, for performance horses because it's got a decent amount of protein at 14% and not a lot of fat at 12%. So it will give horses the energy they need to compete at high levels of exercise without adding a ton of fat onto their bodies. Now our next bag, this orangish looking bag with like our, I guess you'd call him um, like a brown, he probably goes black in the winter I'm assuming, um, horse here in the middle. We have a bag that's almost the, basically the same amount all the way down. We have 10% crude protein, 10% crude fiber, 10% crude fat, and then we have a slight amount of trace minerals. So this is our Triumph's Triple 10 feet, which I guess makes sense because everything is 10% in it. So this bag uh, fits into a feed category of concentrated because it has a mix of nutrients to create a well-balanced supplement for horses. The trace minerals in it help with hoof growth and coat quality. So that's why um, this, this bag has a concentrated amount because it's got the, the trace minerals and then all of our regular ingredients that we normally have in a grain anyway. This feed type would be useful for hard keepers and performance horses because again, we have um, a good amount of protein, we don't have a ton of fat, and then those trace minerals are really gonna help horses that need a little bit of help with their hoof and their coat care. So really great uh, bag overall. Then we have our third type here, which if you haven't guessed already, just by simple process of elimination, is a complete type, and it even has it in the name. This is a Triumph Complete Horse Feed Bag. So a um, little fun fact, because this is a bag of feed that I was actually using for a long time. They've actually discontinued this and it's now uh, Country Feeds Complete. So if you do go looking for this similar uh, brand in stores, it looks completely different. It doesn't look like this bag at all. So um, just a little side note here that this has been discontinued. So looking at our complete feed, um, this one has 12% crude protein, 25% crude fiber, 3% and 3.5% crude fat. So that's quite a jump on our crude fiber amount compared to the other two bags, 25% compared to our 12 and our 10. 
Now, this one feeds in, uh, this one falls into a complete feed because it's meant to replace hay. So it gives all the energy a horse needs from this one source of feed, which is why our crude fiber is so high. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would you feed a horse only grain? Remember our food pyramid? It shows that grain should be the least amount of what they eat. Why would you want a horse to eat only grain? Well, in some cases where you have older horses, such as what I have, and they don't have a lot of teeth, where they're not able to really ground up their hay and get the necessary energy and nutrients from the hay, this is when you would need a, co a complete feed. You may also be in a situation where you're in a drought or in some kind of natural disaster like a fire or something like that where you simply cannot get your hands onto bales of hay, but you still need to be able to feed your horse. This is when a complete feed would come in very handy, when you need to still give your horse energy, but you just don't have access to hay or they can no longer eat it. So that's where a bag like this would come into play. So now that we know that there are many types of grains and that each bag of grain has a different purpose of feeding, let's look at some variations across brands. So we were just looking at um, Triumph and then this is a bunch of Safe Choice brands that we're looking here. So as you can see, Safe Choice has a bunch of different grains for all stages of horses, from young to old, special care horses, and performance horses. Understanding what your horse needs at each stage of their life is critical to choosing the right bag of grain for them because, as you notice, they have different calorie levels, different sugar and starch levels, amino acid levels are uh, they're more or less in the same ballpark, but um, they all have different things in it. So it's really important you understand what type of horse you are needing to feed so that they can get the right amount of nu nutrients when they go to eat their grain. The other thing that's really cool when you go to look at grains is that if you have a horse that has special dietary needs, such as hard keepers, insulin resistant, or maybe you have a horse that, ha that has HYPP, then there are grains that are made for those specific horses that have low starch, low sugar, things like that, that will help them with that. Triple Crown is one of those brands um, that has those kind of options. So again, I'd like to just reiterate that this is not a brand or product endorsement of any kind between Triumph, Safe Choice, or even Triple Crown. These are just examples of ones that you can go and look at if you have horses that have different feeding management plans, which is just, it's important to know all this information so you can make the most informed choice for your horse. This is why it's important to really look at the feed labels, read the back of the bags. Don't just look at, oh, this horse looks similar like mine, this is the one I should get. It's not that easy. Even if you have a performance horse, there's a lot of different brands that offer different types of performance feeds. You wanna make sure you're getting the right amount of performance energy for the right level of your horse. If you only go and compete maybe once a month, that's different than a horse who's going and competing every single weekend. So those two horses would need very different nutrient requirements and you wanna keep that in mind when you're getting feed. So now that we've gone over types of grains, we figured out that there's a lot of different choices to look at. We also need to look at our other side of our food pyramid, which is our types of hay. So at first we talked about our grains, that little part of our pyramid, now we'll talk about the very bottom of our pyramid, our forages or types of hay. So hay is divided into two different types. We have our legumes and our grasses. So what a legume is, is that it's a plant that creates a symbiotic relationship with bacteria called rhizomes in the soil to fixate nitrogen. This means that the bacteria and the plant work together to create benefits for each other. Grasses don't do that. So that's just the big difference between the two. So if you think, if someone says, oh yeah, I grow legume uh, hay, it means that they grow a type of plant that has a relationship with bacteria instead of just a normal grass plant. Our only legume that's really uh, fed to horses is alfalfa. All the other ones are grasses. So that's pretty easy to remember. So. We have a bunch of common types of hay here. We have alfalfa, timothy, smooth brown, orchard grass, there's a bunch of others. I just listed a few, um, but that would be to keep in mind of our two different types. When you're thinking about what type of hay you wanna feed your horse, you wanna think about our sugar levels because that's gonna be really important. So alfalfa is known as, some people call it what is called a hot feed, meaning there's a lot of sugar in it, there's a lot of protein. It gives the horse a lot of energy. But if you have a horse that's naturally very hot tempered, gets very anxious very easily, it may not be the best idea to give them alfalfa because it's just going to get them more excited. If you want that in your horse and you can use that in a performance setting, great. But you need to be careful in understanding that they're going to have a lot more sugar buildup in their system than they would if they're just getting something like orchard grass or timothy or something like that. 
Alfalfa can also cause separation of hoof uh, wall and frog in their feet because of the sugar amount in like older horses or horses who have insulin issues or things like that. So again, that's something to keep in mind when you're going to pick hay. It's not as simple as just picking out a bale and saying, oh yeah, that one looks good and I'll take it home and feed it. There's a bit more to it on that. So when you're thinking about how much hay you need to feed, you need to keep it in mind that on a daily basis, an average horse will eat 1.5 to 3% of their own body weight in hay, which is a lot when you think about it. Research has also shown that when it comes to a diet of a horse, they should have a minimum of 50% of hay in their diet, and truly, it should be higher than 50%. You really can feed a horse on a hay-only diet, which would be beneficial to them, but there might be some issues that just prevent you from doing that because yes our wild horses do go out and they forage and they eat really only grasses and natural plants that they can consume obviously there's no one out there giving them grain but for our domesticated horses that have metabolic issues or horses that are older that just cannot process hay in its natural form that's when you would need grain concentrates things like that so they can still stay happy and healthy even though they're not in what would be called top fit condition so that would just be something to keep in mind. So when you're going to judge hay bales, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind. So you want to look at the mold and dust um, because if a bale is really dusty, it can cause some respiratory issues with the horses as they eat it. This picture, bottom picture here has mold. That's something you definitely don't wanna do. That will definitely cause some health issues for our horses if, you, if our bales are moldy. So please be on the lookout for that. That's definitely not something you want to do. You wanna make sure that um, the bales are green. It, and it also depends on where they're being stored because if you have a bale that's being kept outdoors, you know, and maybe it's just tarp, they're gonna be like a dusty, darker color. But then once you open the bale and get to that first inside flake, they might be green and very colorful like the inside of this one, which would mean that it's still a good bale. So um, just keep in mind that you wanna like look inside the bale, see how much color is still there because the amount of color is gonna tell you how long that bale's been stored and how much nutrient quality it has because a bale that's been stored for a long time starts to degrade, which means it's gonna have less energy, less protein, less available energy to give your horse when they eat it, which kind of defeats the purpose of spending your money. So you definitely wanna check that out. Depending on what type of hay you're giving, you wanna look at the leaf amount. Most of the energy in a plant is concentrated in the leaves. For example, this top picture is of alfalfa bales, and you can tell that because of the coarse looking nature of it. You would want to see how much leaf and stem ratio there is. If there's a lot of leaves in there, it's a good high energy bale. If there's not a lot, of, if there's just a lot of stems, not a lot of leaves, that's not a bale you want to buy because they're really only going to eat sticks, basically. They're not going to get a lot of energy out of it. And again, you're going to be wasting your money. So it's important that you do really look at a bale and also smell it. And if it smells fresh, it smells good, clean, you know how hay is supposed to smell, that's also a good indicator that this is a good bale for you to buy. Now the other test you can do, which takes a lot longer, is you can do a hay test, which is where they use a probe like this. It's one that attaches to a drill. They probe into the middle of the ball, a uh, bale, sorry, they get a sample out and they ship it off to a lab. And the lab looks for nutrient levels, quality of the hay itself. They look at water levels and everything like that that's in the bale. And then they send the results back to you. Most of the time, most people don't have the time to do this before buying a bale. But this is an option if you did have a case where you were maybe looking to get hay a couple months down the road and you kind of wanted to see how a producer was doing with their hay crop. You could definitely ask them for a core sample that you could send off to a lab to see how their process is going and their quality of hay for sure. Um, if you go to an auction house, sometimes they will provide you with the hay test results of the different bales that are there. Not always, but sometimes they do. So that would always be something to check as well. So now that we have talked about um, feeding hay, we also need to figure out when is the when is the best time to really up your feeding? Is it winter? Is it summer? And of course our answer is winter because a horse is burning more energy in order to keep warm. So that's when we would need to think about upping either our grain or our hay depending on your horse's situation because you want to make sure they have enough energy to keep themselves warm. So that's going to be really really important. So when we talk about upping feed we need to think about how in the world do we measure that to make sure we're not overfeeding or underfeeding our horses? So that's what we're gonna talk about now. So 
people use a lot of different items to measure grain and then a lot of different people have different measurements for how they feed hay as well. So when you go to feed grain, a lot of people use like a coffee can, which you see in our first picture here, or they use like a scoop pail that looks like what is here in our second picture. Now, what is interesting is that most people actually don't know how much a coffee can weighs and how much it'll, how much grain it'll hold. It also depends on what brand of coffee can you're using. Are you using the small Folgers can? Or are you using the huge ginormous one? That's a big difference between measuring feed. And then of course our scoops here are another interesting thing. What most people don't realize is that these scoops are measured in quarts, not pounds. So it can be hard at times to get an accurate count for how much feed your horse is actually getting. And to help those out who are bad at math like I am, one quart equals two pounds. But you have other factors to think about when filling a scoop, especially because everybody uses different ways of filling up a scoop. Some fill it all the way to the top, others like fill it up to the top and then they like cram it in with their hand and then fill more in and others just like kind of level it off and leave it alone. So the best way to make sure your horse is getting the same amount of feed no matter what is to weigh out how much you're giving them and compare them to what they actually need to be eating. So for example, if you have a hundred, if you have an average thousand pound horse in light work and a label on the bag of grain recommends half a pound per hundred pounds of body weight, that means they should receive about five pounds of grain per day. Let's say for the sake of argument that one quart of this feed weighs one pound. If your scoop is a one quart scoop and you're feeding twice a day, which is equal to two pounds, then your horse isn't getting all the nutrient nutrition that they need basically. So that's when you would need to increase the amount that you're feeding your horse because you're not hitting that five pound minimum. You would need to up it in order to make sure your horse is getting the right amount of nutrition of the grain that you're feeding them. Now an average sized horse, which is anywhere from a thousand to 1,110 pounds, should, be, should not really be fed more than five pounds of grain per day. So if your scoop is three quarts, which most of them are, that equals out to being able to hold six pounds of grain in it. That's already over the daily limit. So you wouldn't wanna to go to the top every single time you fill up your scoop. If they need to be fed more than five pounds a day, you wanna make sure you break it up in a couple feedings to help your horse's digestive system use it properly. If you do three scoops, which would equal that six pounds and then pour it all in and give it to them like in the morning, that's gonna way overload their system and they're not gonna be able to digest it and it's gonna cause them some metabolic issues down the road. Now, when we talk about how in the world do you figure out how much is in there, there's a couple different ways to do it. One of the easiest ways to do it is to put it like in a gallon size Ziploc bag. So pour all the grain you would put into a normal bag of feed when you go to feed and then put it on a scale. So this same idea kind of goes for hay as well because you wanna get rid of that extra weight that would be on a scale to figure out how much you're actually feeding. And you wanna do it with hay as well because a lot of people say, well, I feed my horse three flakes in the morning and three at night. Okay, well, if you actually ask someone, what is your definition and size of three flakes, it can be from very little to a lot because people's arms lakes are also very different. What I count as three flakes is going to be very different than what my husband has, for example, because his arms are a lot longer than mine. So it's very important that again, you measure out how much hay you're feeding and then you show people, this is how much you need to be feeding my horse if I'm gone away on vacation or something like that. So when you go to weigh hay, a really easy way is to make a little contraption that's here in our last picture. This is just like a simple tote bucket that's rigged up with some rope. And then this scale here is a scale they actually use in grocery stores when you go to um, do like hanging fruit and stuff like that. So you can get those on Amazon, Walmart, anything like that. It's really easy to find these scales. They're not that expensive. And then what you would do is whatever, how many flakes of hay you would normally feed your horse, you would put that in there and then test out the weight to see how much you're actually giving them. So it's really important that you really understand that you're hitting those feed requirements of how many pounds of, of hay and grain a horse should be having per day because that's what's gonna keep them happy and healthy. Obviously, some people do open feeding like in round bales, things like that, where the horse kind of has a choice of how much they wanna eat. But again, you just wanna be making sure that they're not overeating and that they're still being in a controlled environment where you're not having other issues like weight issues and things like that if you're free feeding. So just something to keep in mind when you're figuring out how much feed is your horse actually getting per day. 
So now that we've looked at how to judge how much food you should be dishing out to your hungry four-legged friends, we also need to know how to look at our horses to make sure they are getting enough nutrients. We do this by using the BCS scoring system. BCS stands for body condition score. It looks at the fat deposits on different areas of a horse's body and that allows us to put them on a scale of one to nine. The low numbers represent horses who are underfed and are close to that starvation line. And then our high numbers, <coughs> excuse me, in the seven to nine range are for horses that are overfed and are on the obese side of the feeding spectrum. You ideally wanna keep your horse in the four to six range to keep them in a healthy condition. Now, when you go to judge body condition score, you wanna look in a few key areas. Those are the neck, rib and back, and then the tail head regions. These areas will easily show you if a horse needs more or less food depending on their stage of life. Now, if you look at where my mouse is here on our poor scale, this one to three, on the neck, you can see that it has a lot of depressions to it. You can see like that jugular vein coming in on the bottom and it just looks, it just looks skinny really. And then when you um, go down here to the rib and back area, you can definitely see the ribs. They, they're, you can see their spine is very defined. Um, their shoulder is very defined. You know, there's a lot of stretch marks on the bottom of their belly because they're just having a lot of divots. And then even their hindquarters, that has where you can really start to see a lot of bad definition. This is definition that you wouldn't want to see on a horse because it's an issue of nutrition, not of exercise. So, um, and then the same thing on our tail head. So if you look at the tail head, you can see that it makes a very, it's almost like a triangle from one side to the other. It's very pointed in the middle. You can see that it's very like cramped under right by their tail head. There's a lot of definition here that is where they should have natural fat deposits and it's not happening because the horse just um, simply doesn't have the food to recover and put it in that area. So that would be an issue of where, again, this horse is not getting enough nutrition. Now on our moderate scale, okay, this is where you, you want your horses to be at. So on this scale, you can see the horse has um, good definition in their neck. If they don't have like a crest happening, you can see good definition in it. And we don't have a huge lack of jugular vein um, separation here. So that would be something to keep in mind. Um, on our neck region when we're looking at that. And then um, on our tail, on our, sorry, on our rib and back section here, it is a little bit farther back picture than our first one, but you can't see the ribs anymore. Um, and you don't have where you're seeing like a lot of bad definition. Now it's starting to see like where you can quarter your horse. They have good definition in their hindquarters, things like that. With the score of four to six, you, should, you shouldn't be able to see their ribs, but if you lightly push on their side, you should be able to fill them without a lot of resistance. That's how you would know they're in that four to six region when it comes to their ribs. And then our tail head region, this is, it definitely, as you can see, our shape here makes kind of like a heart. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't want a triangle, you want a heart where it's even, that we don't have those um, really big divots on the side like we do in our first picture here, which shows us that this horse is in good healthy condition. Now we get onto the heavy end of our spectrum, which is seven to nine. So this one, as you can see, we have basically um, no definition in our neck. It kind of looks like one solid plane. I mean, you can't even really see this horse's jugular groove at this point because it's all just started to become kind of floppy and one shape, which is a problem. Then in our um, rib and back region, I mean, again, you start to see where it's all just kind of one shape, one kind of big blob, which is a problem because that creates more weight for a horse to carry around. It can be difficult for them to pick up paces when you want to exercise them, things like that. And it can also cause issues with hoof separation and a bunch of other things that you just don't want to have to really worry about with your horses. So this would be a condition where if you push on this horse's ribs, you wouldn't even be able to fill them. You'd really have to dig to find the ribs. And that would be definitely a sign of being uh, a bit overfed for sure. And then on our tail head region, here you can see that it's basically round. It's almost like a, just like the top of a circle that looks like. So we don't want a circle, we don't want a triangle, we want a heart when you're looking at the tail head of your horse. And then of course we, uh, the sides are basically just round as well, which is not what we want. So of course we just wanna keep in mind, we want a heart, not a triangle, not a circle. And then when you're looking at all this and you're looking at a horse and you're trying to figure out where on this BCS score do they fall, you also need to keep a couple other factors in mind. 
the two other factors you need to keep in mind is age and breed because those two do matter when it comes to looking at body condition score. So a young horse might look really skinny and thin and kind of gangly and awkward where you might think, oh, I'm gonna give him a three because I can kind of see his ribs, he just looks funky. Well, you have to remember, young horses are growing a lot. They're using a lot of energy. And sometimes they just literally haven't had time to develop those areas of fat. So that is something to keep in mind. And also older horses will also kind of look like that as well. Older horses tend to lose muscles in their back and it kind of like in their shoulder. So their skin sags, you know, their belly seems to be hanging lower. And then their ribs may be more visible simply because their skin is sagging because they're older. It doesn't mean that they're unhealthy. It just means that just like people, their skin starts to take a toll as well because of their age. The other thing to keep in mind is breed differences. Take, for example, a thoroughbred and a quarter horse. Thoroughbreds are taller, they're naturally leaner, muscle-built horses than other breeds such as quarter horses. Someone who's only been around quarter horses, they may instantly think that all of the high-quality thoroughbreds are being starved to death because thoroughbreds kind of have like a thinner neck. You can kind of see their jugular groove a little more, and sometimes their ribs are slightly visible. It doesn't mean that they're not being fed properly. It can just simply mean that there's a breed difference. So again, that's one other thing to keep in mind. You have to remember that every breed and age is gonna look different. So it's important to have a conversation with the person who owns a, her owns a horse instead of just assuming that they're not getting fed properly. Because I'm willing to guarantee you that if a horse is getting taken care of, that owner is gonna be willing to talk to you about why they look the way they do. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so to wrap everything up on a basic scale of equine nutrition, it's all about understanding what you're feeding, how much you're feeding, and what stage of life your horse is in, which is critical to keeping your horses from being these jolly roly polies in the field and then um, our starved animals that are very near death. So we definitely don't wanna be on either ends of the spectrum. They're both unhealthy for our horses and we definitely wanna keep them in the middle. So each horse is different. Each of them will need a unique feeding management plan. Consult with your vet and farrier to make sure you're getting your horses the best feed you can to ensure they have a healthy digestive system, strong hooves, and a shiny coat. So, in conclusion, that's all I really have to cover on basic equine nutrition. So good nutrition equals happy, healthy, shiny horses. I hope you all enjoyed this short little intro video on basic equine nutrition and possibly even learned something new. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you always stay up to date with our newest videos. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thanks so much for watching um, this newest video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.